Well, welcome to another edition of Morgan's Mailbag, where I give my real-time reactions to your comments, questions and occasional ad hominem attacks, shameful ad hominem attacks, about the content we've been serving up on Piers Morgan Uncensored. As usual, they've all been chosen without any of my knowledge or prior approval by my highly trained, they've written this, highly professional team of elite producers. So, let's get started. First up, our big debate this week was the Ferrari, of course, over the faked royal photos, and my position was quite clear. It's a painful lesson for the monarchy, perhaps, about honesty control in this new age of social media. And the only way out of the corner they've painted themselves is to tell the full story and release the original photograph. And if the uncensored inbox is anything to go by, it seems a lot of you, well, you disagree, actually, with my thinking on this. Michael D. Jones wrote, Morgan, it's Mr. Morgan to you, with respect, just draw a line under it and move on. You, the media, had destroyed Kate's Mother Day memories. Bottom line is a lovely picture of a mother and her children. What's the big issue? Here's the big issue. It's trust. They, the palace, were given this picture by Kate. They give it to the world's most respected news organisations, who then send it back and reject it when they discover it's not a real picture. It's been manipulated. So trust is damaged. And if you don't have trust in what the palace is giving officially to news agencies, what can you believe that comes from the palace? That's why this matters. Pucci E2 joined in the general mood of Morgan bashing. Piers' voice has been modulated, it seems. He's sounding like a twangy, whining harkle on this clip, demanding the original shot. You want to talk about humiliating? There you have it. You should really pull this video and apologise. What am I apologising for? I didn't manipulate that picture. Kate, by her own admission, did. I didn't post it on Mother's Day to present a picture of myself looking incredibly well and healthy to dispel rumours of conspiracy theories. Kate did. I have enormous sympathy for the fact she's going through whatever she's going through. But we don't know what it is. We don't understand a lot of things that are going on around it, like William missing his godfather's memorial when he's supposed to be speaking, pulling out an hour before, even though it was literally down the road from him. We don't understand any of this. And it's concerning. If you like the royal family like me, if you believe in our monarchy, this is our future king and queen we're talking about. So these things matter. As part of our debate, we had Republican Alex O'Connor in. It's fair to say he was feeling rather smug, as you'd understand to be expect from a Republican. It's nice, by the way, to hear you also uh, calling for accountability from the royal family. That's something that I suppose I'm not used to when sat in this room. But some of you agree with him. At 4 a.m. pizza. Who has a pizza at 4 a.m.? Seriously. They're just so congealed by then. He said the whole idea of a monarchy is profoundly stupid. Is it? Is it? Look around the world. Where do you see a republic that's actually got a better state of affairs than our great monarchy. Look at Queen Elizabeth II. When she died in her 90s, after a 70-year reign, the most respected public figure in the world. It wasn't a US president. It wasn't any other president or prime minister or any other elected official. It was an unelected monarch of this great country. People loved her and respected her because she showed what leadership actually is about. <laughs> Well, next, my one-on-one -on -one with the mathematician and founder of the intellectual dark web, Eric Weinstein, who wasn't on the show to play games. I've got ten things. I want to give uh, you the opportunity to give me a statistical probability of these things happening. So you can choose any percentage you like, OK? But you've got to no, answer no, quickly. No. It's rapid fire. No, no, no. Yeah, I decline. You can't do that? No. Well, at dog VIP... <laughs> I mean, seriously, who are these people? Appreciated the more serious tone of this conversation. Excellent content. Finally, Piers Morgan has woken up and started to grow a brain to having a segment with intellectual substance. It's been a long journey. Uh, I'm actually 59 on March the 30th, and it's, so it's taken me about 40 years to grow a brain to speak with any intellectual substance. Uh, so thank you, at dog VIP. Hope your brain's all right. Woof, woof. A big part of my discussion with Dr. Weinstein was centered around AI and the threat of nuclear annihilation. A lot of the cool kids in Silicon Valley have developed a meme, which is that, oh, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. And that may be in the long run, but at the moment, it's not even, it's not even close. Well, one correspondent weighed into that debate, saying, my thinking is AI and nuclear together is a bad idea. When the robots take over, they will push the button because they don't have anything to lose. 
not Putin. Well, it's a really good point, isn't it? A human natural reaction is to not press the nuclear button because we know what would happen and we don't want to kill all humans. Robots, probably when they get to think about these things for themselves, which will happen one day, when they do, they'll think humans are pointless. We are pointless and therefore nuking us all is a pretty easy, simple idea. I'll finish my encounter with Eric by asking him to give us the simplified version of his grand theory of reality. And he obliged. Well, kind of. I believe that we are looking at a 14-dimensional world. I effectively, you think you're living in four dimensions, but you're playing back a 14-dimensional world versus via Einstein's metric. At Louis Holland spoke, I suspect, for many of us. As a layman, I can confidently say that Eric failed at the layman's version at the end. I completely agree. The trouble with interviewing people with brains like Eric Weinstein uh, is that they're so stupendously smart you can't really understand anything they say when they get even remotely technical about their area speciality. And he completely lost me, but he was a great guest. Uh, rapper Ja Rule joined me from his home in the Dominican Republic, talking about his ban from the UK. What's your message to the, the British Home Office if they're watching this? Let me in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia said, I enjoyed every second of this very random interview. They're good together. I hope the bromance continues to blossom. Well, he's, he's challenged me to a game of golf, and I would enjoy it. I enjoyed our interview. It began fairly straightforwardly. It deviated off into all sorts of random areas. I think I had fun, he had fun. And you know what? Sometimes opposites attract. What's your handicap, Piers? 16. What's your handicap? 16. You? Oh, oh we, could, we could play then. I'm... During our conversation, I obviously tried to get some fresh intel on Jar's infamous feud with 50 Cent with limited success. The, the least surprising reaction to your, your uh, issue came from your old rival, 50 Cent, who replied to your post on X by saying, ha, 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 ha. I did not have nothing to do with this bleep not getting in, lol. He added LMAO, laughing my ass off. I got juice all over the place, sucker. Uh, so he was obviously thrilled that you weren't allowed into uh, this country. What's your response uh, to 50 I, Cent? Uh, I think I responded. I'm cool, you know, I don't, I don't get into the, to the back and forth, you know. I think, um, well, you did, you did it to a deep... All that back and forth on the internet. Well, you, 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 know, you, we call, you that, called him... So I'm cool. You called him N-word, you pussy, shut up. <laughs> Mrs. Live, Laugh, Love, I like that name. Yes, what a mantra for life. Each question was a trap that you hoped he would walk straight into, but it didn't work. Well done, Jar. Yeah, I was out there with my fishing rod trying to trap him into saying stuff. The guy's one of the biggest rap stars in the world. He's done a gazillion interviews. I wasn't trying to trap him. I was just trying to get some juicy quotes. That's my job. Literally my job. Somebody 7070 passed on this analysis. Piers wanting so bad to be included in the gangster cool guys club. All right. It, it's a fair cop. I do. I actually do. I got a fetish for wanting to get my freak on on the back street in the backseat of the Yukon. Now, here on Mailbag, we don't just want to hear your comments. We also want your questions, too. You can ask me anything. This week, Lady Lorna posed this to our X page. Hey, Piers, have you seen the latest Madonna video where she asked a disabled fan in a wheelchair why they are sitting down? Love to get your reaction to see if you found it as funny as I did. Well, no, I haven't, Lady Lorna, but thankfully, my producers have got it for me, so I can watch it now. What are you doing sitting down over there? What are you doing sitting down? Oh, okay. Politically incorrect. Sorry about that. I'm glad you're here. Politically incorrect. No, love. You were unbelievably rude to a disabled fan. Shocking, shameful, and entirely in keeping with your antics since you turned 80. And you've got to stop. If I'd been that fan, I would have said, never mind me sitting here because of my disability. What are you doing staggering around up there? It's over, Madge. Give it up before it's too late. <laughs> Moving on, my spirited head-to-head -head with former MSNBC anchor Mehdi Hassan is well on its way to over a million views. Uh, Inflation Reduction Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Agreement, the Gun Control Legislation, the CHIPS Act, the PACT Act, we could go on and on, record low unemployment. It's a great domestic I record. I can feel a butt coming, Having Mehdi. said that, obviously, the butt is October the 7th. Tube freak, well, aren't we all? 
in the world of YouTube, said a great example of a huge restraint of deep tensions in a passionate and composed debate. This is how things should be done. I actually agree. You know, Mehdi and I could have just locked horns and bellowed at each other for half an hour, but far more interesting to have a genuine debate about what is a very complex issue, the Israel-Hamas war and what's happening in Gaza. Just to be clear, you, you, it was an act of terrorism and Hamas are terrorists. That's your position. I think, I think the Hamas fighters who went into Israel and killed civilians and kidnapped babies, certainly I would call them terrorists. Well, at Fruit Fly Killer, wow, brutal, was a tad more one-sided in their analysis. Piers was swinging for the fences on this one. It was good to see Mehdi brought up his hypocrisy when it comes to the question of Palestinian guests and Israeli guests. Am I hypocritical? I think that what happened on October the 7th was a terrorist attack. I think Israel responded in the only way they could, which is with military force. My question is what is proportionate? And I think they're beginning to exceed most people's sense of proportionality when it comes to what's happening in Gaza. But is that an act of terrorism itself? I don't think it is. I think it's a response to an act of terrorism. And you've got to be careful about the language you use. Well, next, my special emergency Oscars panel, where we rolled out the uncensored red carpet for YouTube mega streamers, the critical drinker and nerdrotic. It was not a great year for movies. And so I think um, the Oscars this year, it's probably an example of playing it safe and picking the logical choice because it was pretty much the best that we got. It was so pretentious and cringe, I couldn't get through it and I had to actually stop watching it at some point. This proved a box office smash with lots of you, including Lone Dog, who wrote, Nerdrotic and Drinker being on Piers feels like a drug trip. Well, I agree, I felt quite high myself. I mean, let's be clear, a natural high, but I was tripping along, thoroughly enjoying dissecting the Oscars. Part of our debate centered inevitably around Barbie, being a huge flop at the Academy Awards. I don't understand this obsession with, 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 with Barbie because Barbie as a character is quite unlikable. She's a complete bitch. She's a rude cow. She treats Ken <laughs> horribly. I don't understand your, why you're having this totally hor agree. horrible... At Blue Eyes said, as a female, I'm embarrassed at the woke feminism. I'm sick to death of everyone being offended. I grew up with Barbie in the 80s but refused to watch this. If only I had refused myself permission to watch it. It was honestly mind-numbingly offensive to all men, and we shouldn't have allowed it to come out. I want to do a movie called Ken, with uh, dozens of Kens who are all brilliantly talented, and you have one Barbie who's as dumb as a rock. See how the feminists feel when that movie comes out. Trust me, they won't be running to give it awards. On the subject of movies, we debated, is Mary Poppins racist? Of course she is. Can you think of a more racist human being in the world than Mary Poppins? After the British Board for Cinema Classification gave it a parental guidance rating for including outdated language. Yeah, of course Mary Poppins is, is racist. I remember watching it as a child and going, my gosh, spoonful of sugars for breakfast? Listen, <laughs> this, is, this is as stupid as, as it gets. At Baden's Nax 5804, commented, you've got to love Tyrus calling out the petty bullying tactics. The guy is smart and can think for himself, so I doubt they'll be booking him again. Actually, we booked him again. Because I love people that are smart and say what they really think, even if they wind people up. Uh, I think we're just brittle. Finally, Brad Smith wanted to pull me up about my pronunciation. Why are you calling Tyus Trarus Pierce? Uh, well, Brad, uh, it's Tyrus for one, not Tyus. It's not Trarus. I never said that. And it's Piers, not Pierce. So you were three for three. Congratulations. That's very, very good. Well, that's it for this edition of Morgan's Mailbag. Remember, you can watch all of my past interviews, debates, and monologues on the Uncensored YouTube channel. We're fast approaching 2.5 million subscribers. To sign up and become part of our growing community. And until next time, keep it uncensored. <laughs> <laughs>